you, you're, you're talking of you're giving me an affidavit of indigence of what it costs for you to like reside, rent, right. and all that. Right. And I don't really, I personally don't pay that, but he does. does. Ma'am? He pays it. He's paying. Yeah, so five so, six, which is nothing. Get to a finish and stop. Yes, sir. You're putting here under oath $1,250 for rent. Really? Are you paying $1,250? You're not paying anything, are you? Kind of like, well, a, a, a false statement under oath is kind of like perjury. Yeah, you go to jail for that. Yes, sir. How can you do that? You've been, a, I think you've signed it. An indigent form that says you're unable to hire anybody. Yeah. It says not applicable. Oh, this this says you weren't cooperative with the magistrate. Well, number one, before I do anything, you're going to sit over here and fill one of these out, these indigent forms. You're going to cooperate or, or I'm going to make all the determinations. But Today's proceedings shed light on the plight of two defendants who claim to be indigent unable to afford legal representation. Our first case brings before the court a female defendant who asserts her financial hardship, citing reliance on food stamps and the support of her boyfriend for basic needs. However, the crux of the matter lies in her recent positive test result, raising concerns for Judge Stevens. Will she provide a valid explanation for this unexpected turn of events? All the consequences of her actions lead her behind bars. Stay tuned as Judge Stevens uncovers the truth. And in our second case, we encounter a male defendant who, like his counterpart, claims indigence, but had issues during the legal process. His failure to cooperate with the public defender's office and complete paperwork accurately has drawn the attention of Judge Stevens. But today, Judge Stevens will make sure that this man becomes cooperative before leaving his courtroom or else. Leslie Ross, come forward. Do you live alone, ma'am? Well, I have my uh, I actually live with my boyfriend. Yes, sir. You're cohabitating with the boyfriend. Yes. Which, which is there's no rule against that. It's the the the, but the issue is. <laughs> The cost. That he exceeds my. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're talking of. You're giving me an affidavit of indigence of what it costs for you to like reside, rent, right. and all that. Right. And I don't really. I personally don't pay that, but he does. does. Ma'am. He pays. It. He's paying. Yeah. I so don't, I don't your, pay that. your monthly expenses. My income is a 586, which is nothing. Get to a finish and stop. Yes, sir. You're putting here under oath $1,250 for rent. Really? Are you paying $1,250? You're not paying anything, are you? Kind of like, well, a, a false statement under oath is kind of like perjury. Yeah, you go to jail for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Sorry. Who pays for utilities? He does. He does. That's another one. I was paying the like the water and the electric. I I would give him money, but that was before like I didn't stop working. So sorry. So we take fifteen hundred dollars off the sixteen sixty and mm -hmm. your expenses have gone from sixteen sixty to one hundred sixty. Okay. Miraculously. It's mad. Okay. <laughs> thank you for thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm so well, sorry. Like, the truth always is important absolutely. when you're swearing absolutely. to something. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> sorry. I, I guess we should have added him on here. <laughs> so the total income you get is solely from food stamps? Yes, that's it right now. Yes. That's all. Mm -hmm. If that changes, you have to uh, let me know. Absolutely. 
the boyfriend, what does he do for a living? He's actually, he works at Granger Chevrolet. He um, okay. is a ace mechanic. So. Okay. So I declare you indigent in spite of the fact that there's somebody's paying the bills because you're only bringing in right. Nothing. about $400 yeah. net a month. Yeah. So uh, an attorney will be appointed to uh, represent you okay. on this case. That's the one thing. The other thing, you tested positive for benzodiazepines, which is a controlled substance. What is it? Your Is that a... Uh, do you have a uh, prescription? I have a bunch of different ones for my medication. I'm taking. I'm taking um, methos. Uh, it's like a. Um, it's a steroid and antibiotic. So I'm taking two different taking fractrum and that one medication. What's well, a controlled substance that you're tested for? Benzodiazepines. I need to see what your prescription is. I need to take, I or else you go to jail. Yeah, that's the way it is. You, you you're subject to drug testing, and you've tested positive for it. A drug that's a controlled substance. You have to have yeah, a prescription. I, I don't even know what that is, though. So. Uh, well, did you get the prescription from the street or somebody on the corner, or was it a physician? Yes, sir. A physician? Yeah, I got. Call yeah, the I, physician. Okay. You need to call the physician okay. and tell them that you just tested positive for benzodiazepines, and you need to know if that's the prescription they're giving you. Yeah. Because you're not leaving until we get this worked out. Okay, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank right. you. You can go are, right outside, but don't leave the courthouse. Oh, no, you know, no. just right out there, make a call, get somebody yes, to answer this for you. All right, thank you All so right. much. Okay, give me another rubber band. A few moments later. So, okay. Yes, ma'am. Is there a piece of paper? Come on, there we go. Like, uh, talk to so, you. I put uh, a letter on top. Um, my, you've been appointed a lawyer, and what we're going to do is Mr. ask uh, Miss Mantellini. I think I that's who I the first person I can see. Uh, we're going to ask her to help you on this and see this show. I need to show, yeah. I was trying to create you a oh. note, and I'm I don't want to see what's wrong with your leg. My goodness, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. But, but it was her, her trying to explain her prescription for things like that. Mine's. Yeah, and one mouth today. Um, here, what we're going to? I need to do. I really need. A okay, so you're taking oh, you. this sulfameth, yes sir, methos yes, sir. Yes, sir. and trimethoprin. Yes, sir. Okay. And I know. I mean, I I, I would yes, never sir. like. That's why I even told him. He he's like, you're going to pass, and I was like, well, of course. So like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. yeah. What? Well, I. So I don't what we all we need to do is just make a copy of this so we've got it in the file. Here, you can keep oh, the yes, hands. God bless you. Thank you. You, right, you can show Miss Mantellini yes, your leg. Yes, uh, Twenty four CR three seven three and three mm -hmm. seven four are called Marvin Parker. Is that you? Yes, sir. Is it also Marvin Joseph Parker Jr.? Yes, That's your full name. Yes, Oh, yeah, I'm a junior too, so I know how that can be. Sometimes you, your dad and you get mistaken. You have two cases here. One of them, 373, alleges that on or about January 9th, 2024, in Jefferson County, Texas, you committed the third degree felony of evading arrest or detention with a motor vehicle. And you have two prior convictions in 2019 in this criminal district court of assault on a public servant and illegal possession of a controlled substance. So that bumps the third degree felony punishment up to second degree felony. If convicted, you face no less than two nor more than 20 years confinement in prison and a fine up to $10,000 can be assessed. And of course, you're not eligible uh, for probation in front of a jury. Uh, uh, 12 days before this evading arrest occurred, it's alleged that in Jefferson County, Texas, that you committed the first degree felony of aggravated robbery with the use of a firearm. Those two prior convictions are listed. So this first degree felony bumps up the minimum 
punishment to no less than 15 years up to life imprisonment and a fine up to $10,000 can be assessed. Do you understand what you're looking at in these two cases? Yes. All right. Mr. Grove is your attorney. What are we going to do, David? Uh, your Honor, this is an I, announcement day. Yeah. I believe that Mr. Mr. Parker wants to reject the plea bargain that has been been offered. He also would like to talk to the court about reducing his bond because he believes his bond is uh, is excessive. I think everybody does. Well, uh, thinks that their bonds are excessive. I know. I probably would think so too if I had a bond. But bond or all. Bond conditions and bonds are set at an amount that's based on the, essentially the circumstances of the crime, criminal history. Uh, those are the main aspects, and there are other attributes that uh, the law says to look at. But those are the basic uh, formula determinations. And number one, we're going to set these for trial, the first-degree felony enhanced Aggravated robbery will be set first. You're appointed to represent him? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Grove can continue to be your lawyer. He's a very good lawyer. Probably would get to trial quicker if you agreed to release him. The next person on the trial docket wheel would be appointed. You can always hire somebody if you're able to. What do you want to do? Keep him or not? Mm -hmm. How can you do that? You've been a... I think you've signed a, an indigent form that says you're unable to hire anybody. Yeah. It says not applicable. Oh, this, this says you weren't cooperative with the magistrate. Well, number one, before I do anything, you're going to sit over here and fill one of these out, these indigent forms. You're going to cooperate or, or I'm going to make all the determinations. But you need to fill out the indigent form that shows how much money you have. If you're unable to hire a lawyer, then I'll make sure that you get an, an a competent attorney to appoint it. You can always hire somebody. It, you can figure out how to do it. But uh, before we do anything, the law says indigent, indigent forms have to be filled out completely first. So fill that out, and then I'll take up the next matter. If you're unable to hire a lawyer, do you want to keep Mr. Grove or not? Yeah. You'll keep him? Um, he, he's a competent lawyer. All right. And we'll set these for trial. Fill that out, please. Also, while we're doing this, uh, hold on. You, There's a bond. What's his bonds, please? Okay, yeah, baby, it's $15,000. Um, the aggravated robbery is $300,000. The DA's office has received two additional felony charges in our office, Your Honor, from March 1st. Those have not been indicted yet, but they are. Um, what are they? They are the un unauthorized use of a motor vehicle off in state, February 20th, 24, uh, as well as a theft of a firearm from that date. The theft of firearm, third degree foul? That uh, is a state jail felony, Your Honor. What's the other one? The other one is um, a third degree felony. That uh, mm -hmm. this says state jail felony, but I believe that that's inaccurate, Judge. Well, when are they going to review it? Do you know? I know that it's been received, uh, but I don't. I, I don't like have the information. Two more here. felonies coming down the pike that they're going to send to the grand jury. So we're going to have to wait really and see what happens. And you're going to get, have to have a, additional bonds set on those. And that will be uh, done with a, a magistrate, but the court is not going to uh, touch those bonds in this, in light of what I've read and also two additional criminal felony charges, including a third degree enhanced. That'll be third degree enhanced to a second because of your prior. Your Honor, I'll represent to the court that those two that I mentioned is what actually brought him into custody. He was arrested that date. He's been in continuous custody since then. Um, so I will follow up with intake and see where the status of those are. Fill out that indigent form, uh, please. Can you give him a copy of one of those? Thank you, Judge. No, you got it. All right. Uh, Dennis, uh, we'll take care of that. 
uh, we're going to review this obviously here yes, in a sir. in a couple of weeks. See where they are on these new charges because you can't do anything if there's something coming down the yes, pipe. Sir. All right, that's uh, on that case. Uh, on uh, Mr. Parker, I'm showing Mona. I'm showing you have zero income on this day. I declare you indigent here and that you meet the eligibility requirements for indigent representation. Mr. Grove is representing you, right? He's good one. Follow what he said. He's a pretty good trial lawyer. Too. I'm sorry, Your Honor. All right, I've declared him indigent. You will be representing. You'll we'll set it for trial unless something else happens. That... We're set for review. Yes, oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, we've got those two other cases that they said that they're sending to the grand jury. So we got to review. We can't really do much until you know where all the mess is, yeah. and and that they're not going to be filing anything else. You got to know where, what, how bad the storm is before you can start defending yourself from it. Uh, okay, who's on this one? That's me, Jeff. When did you, uh, when did y'all expecting to go to the grand jury? I don't want exactly, but in, in a matter of weeks. I would think so, Judge. Okay, why don't we review this in four weeks to see? Four weeks. Uh, I have a distinction to check on it when we leave the court. So, so the defense knows where uh, all the damage is and how to repair it if possible. And yes, sir. So I'll look at it that way. It should be given a four week reset. Yeah, review in four weeks, and hopefully you'll know where you stand on all of this, and then you can then you can't strategize without it. You can't. Fix, figure out what you're going to do with two cases, and then you get that done. You come up here, and then they go, "Oh, two more just came in today." You got to know where it all is so that you can work on it at one time and fix the whole problem at one time. All right, we'll review in four weeks. Thank you. All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.